Welcome to another edition of Pause for Thought with me, Greg. Well, here we are at the end of 2020 and at the beginning and threshold of 2021. Many would say that uh, 2020, good riddance. And it has been a challenging time. It has been a difficult time. It has been a painful time. But it's also been a time when we can give thanks to God that we're still here, that we're well, God has provided. And also it's a time when we've had a chance to stop and think and reflect on what is important in life. And what's important in life is our relationship with God and with one another. Many of us, including myself, have missed the opportunity to see loved ones and to just have a hug. But as that famous song goes, count your blessings one by one. And there are many. But as we approach a new year, there are new opportunities and new challenges ahead. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Remember that God is on the throne and in control. People are putting their trust in the vaccine. Typical of this world that we trust in what men have done rather than in God. Not to say that God can't use men and who created science in the first place. And who gives inspiration and dedication and hard work and all the other things that go together to be able to create vaccine in the first place. But also we think of 2021 and the future as a new beginning. It's time to stop and take an audit of our lives. How do we match up to what it says in the Bible? Do we reflect the love of God? What about our character? What happens when we're under pressure? Do we snap and are we nasty and horrible or do we just roll up in a ball and wallow in our own self-pity and depression. What about our sinfulness? Are we truly repentant? The Lord says it, a broken and contrite heart. He doesn't despise. He doesn't want us to come with sacrifices. He wants obedience. And obedience is freedom, actually. It's not constraint. It's a framework that allows us to be free from all the burdens and challenges because we're trusting in our Heavenly Father who created us. But it's also time to look forward. We look forward to a new start with Brexit. No longer tied to the European Union, we're able to be self-determination in our laws and our monies and the way in which we do things. But also we must do this in our spiritual life. 
because the forces of darkness are growing darker. The Bible says the forces of light, that's us with the Holy Spirit within us, must grow brighter as salt, which brings flavor, is an antiseptic, and light, which chases the darkness away. We're moving into a new era with new relationships with countries around the world, and thankfully with our cousins in the Commonwealth. We give thanks for Your Majesty the Queen who's kept the Commonwealth together as a, a group of friends who sadly and with shame we abandoned when we joined the European Union. Many of our relatives and cousins and friends and family are within those Commonwealth countries. In Isaiah 60, it says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness over the people. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. And my prayer is that as a nation, we will rediscover our Judeo-Christian roots, that we will turn back to God, and that we once again will be a nation that is a missionary sending nation, a nation that shines as a beacon in the darkness, a nation that shares the gospel, the good news about Jesus, not only with our own nations, for whom I pray that we stay together in unity as the United Kingdom. But also by our example of doing what is right. Many are saying right is wrong and wrong is right. And the Bible predicts that that would happen before he returns. But what we need <clears throat> is a new beginning. And a new beginning that has meaning comes from the Lord. Isaiah 61, what we need is the year of the Lord's favour. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. So if, if we want the year of the Lord's favor, as spirit-filled, born-again Christians, we're to proclaim the good news to the poor in spirit. And that doesn't just come by preaching, that comes by living a life that we were created to live. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. There are many people who are in darkness. Some don't know it. Some are trapped like prisoners. Some are there because it was their choice and their choice meant that they got locked up. We're called to bind up the brokenhearted. And during this 2020, many people have grieved. Many people have had great loss not even being able to give a proper farewell to their loved ones.
the Lord has anointed me to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God. <clears throat> so there are two sides to having favor with God. It's if you're on the Lord's side, you're on the opposite of darkness's side. And the consequences of being on the wrong side is the day of the vengeance of our God. God grieves when he sees no justice, when there's no love but hatred, where people are exploited, where people are hurt or killed. Think of our Christian brothers and sisters around the world where there has never been such persecution in history. To comfort all who mourn, verse 2, and provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. A foretaste, a foreknowledge of what is coming when we're with the Lord forever in, in heaven where there's no tear, there's no pain, there's no struggling, there's no starvation. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. And an oak of righteousness has deep roots, firm far-reaching branches, beautiful foliage, and when planted and watered by the Lord for the display of his splendor. Knowing that from a failed shoot, the Lord has tended, the Lord has guided, and taught and transformed into something mighty and beautiful. Verse four, they will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places wrong de long devastated, renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Strangers will shepherd your flocks, foreigners work your fields and vineyards. You'll be called priests of the Lord. You'll be made ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of nature, nations and the riches you shall bear. Instead of shame, you will receive a double portion. Instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. So you will inherit a double portion in your land and everlasting joy will be yours. And although we've had a, uh, an over 40 years relationship with the European Union, the consequences of our sin, the consequences of abandoning our family, Commonwealth, our friends, those whom we were closest to, those for whom we spread the gospel and shared about Jesus with, There will be restoration, a bright future, a double portion. Remember when Job lost his family, lost his wealth, lost everything, even his health when he was covered in boils and all his friends were telling him that he must have been sinful and his wife said, curse God and live. But he persevered. He did not lose faith in the Lord because he knew where all his blessings had come from in the first place. <clears throat> and he received more than double what he lost in family, in children, in wealth.
Verse 8. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness, I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the people, and all will see them with, will acknowledge that they are a people the Lord has blessed. Now, obviously, in this context, it's talking about Israel. And if you have been to Israel, you'll note that the place is buzzing with life and growth and beauty. The desert is blooming. The country is prospering. And the people from around the world are completing Aliyah, returning home to Israel from the nations from which they were scattered. As the Lord said, it would be. But the Lord's also saying that he hates robbery and wrongdoing. When you think about it, the Ten Commandments is our template and these are the things that God is asking for justice because he loves justice. And in faithfulness, he will reward my people, it says, and make an everlasting covenant with them. The Lord's people are those who live in reality, those who are repentant, those who are obedient, those who are, have the presence of Jesus in their hearts through the Holy Spirit and allows the Holy Spirit to transform them so that it's less of me and more of him. Verse 10, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation, arrayed me in a robe of righteousness, his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the soil makes the sprout come up, and a garden causes seeds to grow. So the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. So trust in the Lord and rely, rely not on your own understanding. Here we again see the Lord seeing his people Israel and us who are adopted and grafted in as a bride, beautifully prepared to receive the bridegroom. And as on the wedding day, we delight in the Lord. Our souls rejoice in our God. And he promises that he will never leave us or forsake us. But as a planting of the Lord, the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. In many ways, our lives are miracles. But a miracle that's kept to ourselves, how do people know? So let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Amen. And as we come to the end of this 2020, we pray the Lord will give us 2020 vision so that we will have discernment and knowledge and understanding and wisdom for the years ahead. 
We continue to pray for our beloved friends and family, for Jim and Jenny in Scotland, for Dave, for Alan, for Jeff and family, Chris's mum, Richard and Ruth, John in Weston, Pam, Nick and Mary, Morgan and Martina, for Zach, Terry and Enid, for Lindsay, Janet B, Jill, for Philip and Beryl, for Barry, Mark Maidley, for Peter, for Mark, for Brian, Trevor and Maya, for Craig in America, for Karen, for Doreen, for Anne Williams and Mike Teeny in Whitford, for John and Sheila, Yvonne and Chris, for Mr. Lewis, Tom, Chris, Chris B, Paul and Sue, Doreen Hargreaves, for Glenn, Susan, Janet, Yvonne and Chris, Lucy, Darren and Esther, for Barbara and John. And we also pray for Caroline. We pray, Heavenly Father, for your blessing and your favour and your mercy and your healing touch for each one of these loved ones and those whom we hold in our hearts that we haven't mentioned. We pray, Lord, that you will daub our doorposts with the blood of the Lamb and our lintels, and that the pandemic will be cut off in Jesus' name, and that we will be safe. We pray for healing in body, mind, and spirit. We pray for deliverance. We pray for release from darkness. We pray that you bind up the brokenhearted. We pray that you release captives and those in darkness who are prisoners. We pray that you provide for those who grieve giving them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, oil of joy instead of mourning, and garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. We pray that you plant us where streams of living water flow, firm and strong and beautiful to you for the display of your splendour. And we pray that you cut off all things of darkness. We pray you cut off all wickedness, sinfulness, soulish prayers, curses, hexes, wrong thoughts, actions, plans against us. And send them back from where they came from, Lord, in Jesus' name, with a blessing and anoint us afresh with your blessed Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, the breath of God, and transform us into your likeness. Less of me, Lord, more of you, so that I may share the good news and be a blessing, firstly to you, giving you all the praise and all the honour and all the thanksgiving, and all the gratitude. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> so it's a time to reflect. We've had plenty of time to stop, and I'm not quite sure that people have learned the lessons deeply enough. Perhaps that's why it's still going on. 
but just to say this is an opportunity that has never happened before worldwide lockdown just imagine it when has the whole world ever been locked down before so seek the lord while he may be found and lean not on your own understanding but trust in him for he is faithful in all the years amen just to say that uh, I'm going to have a pause with our pause for thoughts. So there will not be a pause for thought next week, but they will resume again on the 12th of January. And I like to take this opportunity to say, be blessed, receive a double blessing and double portion, be safe, draw closer to the Lord, and may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you and fill you with his love and joy and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you, all whom you love, cherish, and pray for this day and forevermore. Amen. So the next time I'll see you is when I uh, record a service for Sunday, but then the next pause for thought won't be until the 12th of January. So until then, it's a big God bless you from me, Greg. Bye.